of the pivot of pain when CWD2023 number two, this was the mitochondria analysis and the effects of carbon dioxide levels on that mitochondria. So evident levels of carbon dioxide increase the rate of photosynthesis and growth in plants. Scientists studied the mechanisms involved in the these increases, examined it in a variety of species, and found that when plants are exposed to elevated levels of carbon dioxide, there's an increase in the number of chloroplasts per cell. To investigate whether the elevated levels of carbon dioxide have a similar effect on the number of mitochondria plant cells, the scientists then selected six of these species to quantify the number of mitochondria per cell when the plants were exposed to normal and elevated levels. So here in the data table, you can see there are six different species. You see the mitochondria they have at normal levels, mitochondria they have at elevated levels. So first question is describe the role of the endomitochondrial membrane in cellular respiration. So you have to think to yourself like part A is going to always be a biology question. So what happens in the endomitochondrial membrane, which is also known as the Chris said. This is where we're going to see the electron transport chain. And so the NADH and the FADH2 are going to donate their electrons. They get oxidized. Um, and those electrons move down the electron transport chain, pumping protons across the membrane, creating a gradient. Remember, there's an increase of the protons in the um, intramembrane space, or that space between the two membranes. Um, we also see in this membrane is going to be ATP synthase. It's going to use that gradient to synthesize ATP. Um, so ATP synthesis, um, you're also seeing electrical transfer chain, oxidative phosphorylation, um, and creating that gradient. So this is what the, the uh, scoring guidelines say. It's to provide the location. Um, it separates reactions of the intermembrane space from the reactions that are in the matrix, and it establishes that proton gradient that we're mentioning. And so the student says in the intermembrane space, um, the CRISA is used for the electron transport chain, which is essential to create the proton gradient for the production of ATP. Great job. So part B says using the template in the space provided, um, constructing a properly labeled graph that represents the data in table one. And so looking at our graph, we can see that I have six different species. So it's six different entities. There's species one, species two, species three, and they don't affect one another. That screams bar graph. Um, so this is going to be a bar graph or a modified bar graph. Um, now, I would probably do a modified bar graph because the fact that there are 12 different data points you're plotting plus their error bars. So to me, that would just get a little clunky on the bar graph, but um, you can do either one. So here's what um, the graph should look like. Um, so notice that they pre-labeled um, the y-axis for you. Um, College Board has been doing this on a couple questions where they are pre-labeling an axis or they're pre-labeling um, what's going to be on those axes for you just to kind of help um, with your graphing. <coughs> Sorry. So what you need to have is you need to have your um, axes labeled. Um, and so have your number of mitochondria, have your species, make sure you have a, a key to say which one's which. And then of course, you need to have your bar graph or your modified bar graph with each of your data points and error bars correctly plotted, which was a lot to graph. Um, so if you're running short on time, just go ahead and label your axes and see if you can get a part of the graph made so that they know you, you know what kind of graph to make. Um, that can kind of help to get you some of those points. So the second part says determine which species show a difference in the number of mitochondria between normal and elevated levels. So in terms of that, we need to see which ones um, are the error bars not overlapping on. Um, and so if the error bars do not overlap, that shows that it's statistically significant. So you can see here that those two error bars do not overlap, don't overlap, three does not overlap, four, nope, five, nope, and then also six does not overlap, which means that all the species show a statistical significance. So here's the student's graph. They went ahead, they labeled their axes, they've got all their error bars plotted, all their data points plotted, um, they made a bar graph, um, and they also have a key. So it said all the species show a significant difference in the number of mitochondria between normal and elevated levels. So C says that based on the data, describe the relationship between the level of carbon dioxide and the average number of mitochondrial per unit area of the cell. And I know it's this table and I put the graph. I'm so sorry. Here. Anyway, so you can see here that there is an increase between the normal to the elevated for each of these. Um, as you can say, there is the number of mitochondria is greater under effects of elevated carbon dioxide or that there is a positive correlation. Student says levels of carbon dioxide and the average number of mitochondria per unit area of the cell have a positive correlation because plants have a higher carbon dioxide levels and a greater number of mitochondria per unit. So D is a trump, it was a tricky one. And it's always going to be the tricky one. They, whenever something goes wrong, that's where they put up a D. They, they want to see if you can think through. So D says the levels of a particular plant species are typically green. But scientists notice a plant in which the leaves have white stripes. They determine that the stripes result from mutation in mitochondrial DNA, and that interferes with the development of chloroplasts. The scientists cross plants with 
pollen from a plant with white striped leaves, and ovules from a plant with green leaves. Predict the phenotype of the leaves of the option produced from this cross, and then provide reasoning to justify that prediction. So since it said mitochondrial DNA, I have to look at what is the egg producing um, plant. So the one that has the egg is what we're going to see is the inheritance, okay? This is called maternal inheritance. <laughs> so the scientists um, are seeing that we have pollen, so that's gonna be your male, and the ovules, which will be your female or your egg producer. Um, so since the egg producer has green leaves, I'm gonna say that the offspring will have green leaves um, because this is maternal inheritance. Um, so all green will not have white stripes, um, mitochondria are maternally inherited, or they transferred by the ovule. So this is explaining why plants of the same phenotype are able to differ in the structure and or number of certain organelles in response to change in atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide. So this is what you call phenotypic plasticity, okay, where you can have um, a difference in the environment and that difference in the environment can affect the expression of certain genes. Um, you see this with hydrangeas. Um, so they can have the same genotype and they could be pink in one um, acidity and then they could be blue in another acidity. <laughs> Phenotype of the leaves of the offspring would be green. That is because mutation of mitochondrial DNA can only be passed from female parent. Um, and plants from the same genotype are able to differ in structure and or number of organelles in response to the levels of carbon dioxide because different factors play a role in phenotypes and gene expression of organisms. Since carbon dioxide is an important factor, it could have an effect. So hope that was helpful. Remember, a bad pain was just a